Well, Dr. David Mego and RN Aaron Bailey Powell join us today for, from Arkansas Heart Hospital. Talk about some exciting stuff going on there. Now, I'm just going to call it AVTR. Is that okay? You bet. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about, first of all, the need to replace a valve in the aorta. Sort of how does that happen? Well, a narrowing of the aortic valve is a very common problem. Mm -hmm. uh, more than half a million people in this country have very severe trouble with their valves. Um, it's basically a disease of, of our older patients, right. 80s and 90s and, and beyond. Um, our two patients in the hospital now with this issue are 95 and 99 respectively. Wow. Um, and you can imagine they don't want to undergo surgical valve replacement. Right. Um, so four years ago, in 2011, um, a new technology was approved in this country using a, a stent-mounted catheter-based valve, uh, which you can see here. Uh, and so you can basically approach the patient's heart valve from their groin and use a catheter-based procedure and expand this in place and uh, repair their valve. Wow, and that is the actual valve that would go in, correct? Exactly, yeah. and they, they come in different sizes and things like that. Um, and so this has been a semi-surgical procedure involving cut down in the, in the um, access area and so forth for the past four years. Mm -hmm. And what's transformational now is that it's totally catheter-based. We're no longer using general anesthetic. We're, we're no longer um, doing anything more than just light sedation for the patient. They can talk to us as we do the procedure. Uh, we finish with a couple of catheter-based stitches. They're literally setting up asking to go home later that afternoon wow. and uh, and leaving the following day. Yeah, because when you start talking aorta, I'm thinking that's big time heart surgery. And, and it was. Yeah. Uh, but the, the minimalist approach is now, it's transformational. Yeah, absolutely. Erin, you uh, work with these patients. Talk about how they recover so much better. They. The patient that we did two weeks ago was felt immediately better on the table. He was able to talk to us. Mm -hmm. um, the main issue is making sure that the access from the groin all the way up here is a straightforward approach. So that's basically the CAT scan angiogram that we do mm -hmm. in the beginning of this process would uh, basically drive uh, how we approach this minimalist versus cut down. Right. Anything else about the patient that would uh, preclude them from having this surgery? Anything physically? Well, they have to be able to cooperate with the procedure, mm -hmm. uh, so they should be, you know, oriented and able to cooperate and things like that. Right, because uh, you are sort of a, uh, you're sort of alert, right? Not yeah. completely alert. Yeah, they're they are basically awake. Yeah, is this and the way you see surgery going? I mean, less and less invasive all the time. It, it's a trend. Um, a lot of things in medicine are going that way, mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 exciting. Yeah, I mean, for anybody. Less anesthetic, less invasive, less time in the hospital. That's always good. Right. If someone has this condition, what, what are some of the symptoms they would feel or would they know that they have an aorta valve problem? A narrowed valve often presents as a breathing problem uh, or chest pressure or maybe fainting spells. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the triad we ask people to be aware of. Usually these things are picked up by their doctor with a, with a murmur on exam. And then an echocardiogram and ultrasound of the heart will kind of confirm the valve is a problem and how bad it is. And mm -hmm. that's typically when they come to see us. Yeah. And Erin, I bet the patients are surprised when you say you may get to go home tomorrow if mm -hmm. everything goes well, right? Yep. They're very, very excited about it, yeah. too. Yeah. As opposed to several days to get over the other surgery. Well, th these are older patients that, you know, you, you put a, someone 80 plus years old under general anesthesia, it takes longer for them to recover. So if we can do this minimally, you know, and get them home sooner, right. I mean, that's more important. Okay. Well, if you need more information and think, you know, that perhaps someone in your family uh, could benefit from this procedure. It's not for everybody, correct? And you would have to correct. be screened. Yes. Uh, to see, but uh, yeah, so T-A-V-I or T-A-V-R was a little easier for us to say, mm -hmm. but it's amazing stuff going on at the Heart Hospital. On March 17th, you guys did the first one of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that gentleman that afternoon, um, he's sitting up in bed. Uh-huh. He's feeling great. And the next morning, he's drinking coffee, eating breakfast. He tears off his oxygen. <laughs> I'm done with this. Yeah. 
when can I go home? When, I, when can I play golf? Ready to go back to their lives. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Dr. Amazing. David, thank you so much. Thank Aaron, thank you, thank you as well you for so coming much. today. Congratulations. Give the Heart Hospital a call for this or any other of your heart health questions. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. We're going to go from hearts to uh, we're going to talk a little bit uh, to our pharmacist up next. Stay tuned.